Brian is a, a former engineer at a Fortune 50 company, and he left that job because his two favorite days of engineering was when they actually took time out to go work with kids in an after-school program. And he said, wait a minute, maybe I don't want to make millions of dollars for a multi-billion dollar company. Maybe I want to work with kids. So he did. He went and worked, and I worked at an urban school. I taught eighth grade English. A good teacher teach, a great teacher inspires. Welcome to another inspiring episode of Podcast with Sheila, the podcast that is spreading positivity around the world by sharing inspiring live experiences. Today's guest jumped out of the window to chase a former student to get an update on his life. Before he jumped out, he told the rest of his students, one day you will appreciate having a teacher who will jump out of the window to get an update of you. Hello, Ryan, and welcome to Podcast with Sheila. Hi, Sheila. Thank you so much for having me. This is great. It's, uh, it's a delight to be hosting you. And you saw that as I was reading your intro, I was just smiling because that story sounds so good. And I'd like to know more. And I believe our audience would also like to know more about this teacher. So who is Ryan? What so, does he do and where does he come from? Yeah, so great questions. Ryan is a, a former engineer at a Fortune 50 company, and he left that job because his two favorite days of engineering was when they actually took time out to go work with kids in an after-school program. And he said, wait a minute, maybe I don't want to make millions of dollars for a multi-billion dollar company. Maybe I want to work with kids. So he did. He went and worked, and I worked at an urban school. I taught eighth grade English um, in, a, in a pretty difficult setting. Um, kids that uh, were in generational poverty and yeah. Ryan saw lots of opportunities everywhere and just really it's all about relationships and education building relationships with kids and that's why I switched from engineering to education and Carlos was a tough kid you know, he was in eighth grade and he had tattoos on both mm -hmm. arms and was well behind in reading but just like every kid, he's he's a good kid. Like he's got opportunities, he's got dreams, he's got things he wants to do. So that's what we talked about. That's what we worked on. And four years later, probably three or four years later, after I had him in eighth grade, he's in high school. And the, one of the crazy things is education. A lot of times you don't see your kids after they they leave your classroom. Yeah. So so here I am, years after I've had Carlos in in my classroom. I've got 125 eighth graders in front of me, and there's two of us teaching. And we actually just had kind of a tense moment. Like we just had a community partner in, and kids are kids, so that's not always perfect, right? And they yeah. were kind of goofing around, and we were kind of saying, hey, you need to behave when we have community partners, and you need to do a nice job, and that whole thing. And I saw Carlos go by, mm. and I just saw him walking by, and I was like, I mean, Carlos is a kid that like, I'm like, if I don't see him right now, I am never going to see Carlos again in my yeah. whole life. And that is just not okay. But I look at my teaching partner, and I say, Jeff, this is going to be awkward. I know it's a tense time right now, but I have to jump out the window. Yeah. What? Is it, I've got to. I've got to go see Carlos. I'm never going to see him again. And I know by the time I make it to a door, he's going to be gone. So... I opened up the door, I took the screen off. It wasn't like a five-story jump, it was yeah. just a one, it wasn't that far. Uh, and I looked over and I looked at the kids that were in that room, because they started to ask some questions. I said, look, I've got a student that I need to go chase after, because I want to know how he's doing. Yeah. And someday, kids, you are going to want to have that same teacher chasing after you, who wants to know how you're doing, who wants to get an update, who wants to give you a little more wisdom on your walk. And jumped out the window, chased after Carlos, and uh, he was on his way to a meeting. Yeah. Actually, it was it was in our middle school in the office for whatever reason. Just serendipitously, he's coming by, and he was looking to get a job after high school. And this uh -huh. particular program was going to help walk him through that. And I was like, man, Carlos, this is great. Like we did, we had a big hug, and I just really was able to encourage him. And you know, just selfishly, it's great to see those stories kind of walk out. That you yeah. poured your life, you planted yeah. a lot of seeds into kids. So especially a kid like Carlos, who 
um, was just he you started out in a tough situation. He was yeah. making the best of it, yeah. and he saw that he was gonna like he was on his way of climbing yeah. out. Yeah. And yeah. I would love to say that I've met with Carlos again, but yeah. I was spot on. Like I haven't seen Carlos since. So you know, I I never regret that day that I jumped out the window to go chase after him. Wow, there are tons of questions I want to ask as you kept on sharing your story that I've not written here. So I'm going to see if I'll be able to get them all off my head. One of them is, how did your transition as, from being an engineer to a teacher affect your life in general? Oh, that's so good. What mm. a great question, Sheila. So, I mean, the effects are, are monumental, right? Mm. You make it's, it's such a big change. I left a lot of math credits from college on the mm. table. Mm. But um, the meaning has has been so powerful. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I spent almost a decade in that eighth grade classroom, you know, working with kids that, again, I saw tons of opportunities that they didn't see. So just yeah. able to, you know, through English, through relationships, say, hey, look at these different opportunities. Uh, I was a really good engineer. Like, I like yeah. data. I like the geekiness of mm. it but the relationships and the building of people was really just a sweet spot for me yeah and completely changed the direction of my life wow i teaching is fulfilling i don't know and just like you had said in your story a bit of you that you've poured into somebody and it, it changes a person's life and i like to impart knowledge and I remember when I had come out of school and they wanted to train me to become a junior lecturer, I said no. <laughs> Straight out, I said no, I wasn't ready for that because I wanted to start a business. I wanted to go into the business world and all of that. But, you know, when you're cut out for something, you go around it and then you come back to the same place. So I find myself teaching now. And, yep. you know, yeah, my husband makes fun of me. He said, when you were told to teach in the university, he said, no, now you find yourself teaching. And I'm teaching women. And what I do now, I empower women. But I still teach them skills to be able to start businesses of their own. So it's like you've gone around, but you still come back to the same place. And it's fulfilling. Anytime you see that you've poured yourself out into someone and you see what they've become and the things you are doing, it's so fulfilling to see that you've been able to put yourself there to be an impact into somebody's life. And as you said, those things, I was able to resonate with it because that's exactly my life, that bit of it. So my next question will be, how did it feel for your students to see that you wanted to follow up on his progress? How do you think that made him feel and how did he make the rest of the students in the class feel as well? Yeah, Carlos was super encouraged, mm. you know, the student that I went and kind of chased after. And, you know, when a student like, he was first generation college student, mm. right? He was going to be the first person in his, class, in his family if he was going to go to college, which was part of that meeting as well. It was like working in college. And that's I'm very uncertain. Right? If you've never done that before, no one in your circle has done that before. So having somebody to give you that encouragement of, yes, this is a great next step for you, is just super encouraging. So anybody out there, just like as, as you're teaching through yeah. the podcast or anyone that's, you know, teaching doesn't, it shouldn't just be inside of a school wall, yeah. right? It, it happens everywhere. Exactly. So the, encur the encouragement of teaching is a super important part of that. It's yeah. not just imparting knowledge. Yeah. It is the encouragement to say, hey, you can do this, right? Which is exactly. why I love your podcast. Your yeah. podcast is just filled with, yeah. hey, you can do this, exactly. right? And that's the message over and over yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, I think sometimes we miss that. You know, if we're professors or teachers, we think that we have this knowledge we need to impart and sometimes that's true, mm -hmm. but a lot of times it's the encouragement of, here's the knowledge and you could, you have the power to go and do this. Sometimes that's the most important part of teaching. What were some of the things you heard when you decided to change jobs? Did your friends or your family, did they think you were crazy changing jobs? And how were you able to not allow their, uh, in whatever they were saying, influence your decision? Yeah, so when, <laughs> That's a good question because when you cut your your salary in half and you know you you change like that outlook yeah. of retirement and yeah. those types of things, people definitely have questions. Yeah. But it was and, and I was happy as an engineer, but I also you know impact and purpose are so important. I mean, as humans, this is so, an, an internal need that we have. So. Yeah. Once it really came down to it, and people saw that I thought about it, these people that I love, like when my mom says, are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> you know, my dad, 
My dad was a first generation college student mm-hmm. and engineering helped mm-hmm. him come yeah. out of out of poverty. Yeah. So for him it was like, are you really sure? Yeah. Right? So um, but once they see the passion and the reasoning behind it, uh, they were super supportive of, of the move. Yeah. I, I also believe that each one of us here, we have a pattern in life. Some of us may not uh, even identify it before we leave this world. Others may identify it and may live in. If you ask me now, from everything you said, I would say that you were probably uh, meant to impact knowledge. And that is why you still found yourself in that space and i can say that for myself no matter what i do you go around do other things that you think will probably be fulfilling or would make your life you know what it's supposed to be like it will make you live a good life but you may not find fulfillment in there because that is not cut out for you but once you move into the direction or the space in which you're meant to occupy, you know, to impact the world, then you have fulfillment. You may not have enough coming in, but the fulfillment alone is everything because then you don't have to worry about other things. You see that you move freely into that space. And even though it may not be as much as your former job would have given you, you're still very fulfilled. And I believe at this point, there is nothing that will take you back into engineering. Oh, absolutely. That's correct. That's correct. And I, it, your reflection there, Sheila, makes me think like, what if I still was an engineer? Yeah. You know, and again, I would be uh, very capable of producing the results that I would be exactly. asked to, to produce. But the fulfillment, I just can't imagine it would be there. Yeah. Especially now that I've, you know, I've, in my classroom, I had about a thousand or fifteen hundred kids come through my classroom, right? Yeah. That I, it's some impact on their lives. And I get to hear the stories that come back and, um, yeah, it would almost feel, and I didn't feel like this when I was an engineer, I didn't feel trapped, but yeah. I, I wonder if I would now, or now that I've f- felt the fulfillment of education. Yeah, I, I agree with that. What are some childhood experiences you recollect that you, you think shaped you to the person you are today that you can share with us? Mm, that's good. So my dad was an entrepreneur. He started out, um, he was an engineer. Um, and then he moved into an entrepreneurial space. He had his own business. My mom was a third grade teacher. Um, so my journey has been engineering because that's what got my dad out of poverty. So that's, you know, that was our step. That's where he told us to go. Yeah. Um, but then I made the, the fulfillment move to the classroom. Mm. And now I actually run a group called Magnify Learning and we teach teachers across the country how to find their sweet spot, how to find their fulfillment. And so now I'm running that small business. And this truly is my sweet spot, Sheila. You know, and and I I love that you brought me back to childhood because you can just see that blend come together of entrepreneurialism and education. And that is, I don't know that I've ever made that connection. So this is awesome. (laughs) But that really is kind of where I'm at. And I would say, while I'm excited for things coming in the future, I am definitely in a sweet spot right now. Well, great. You know, you were talking about what you do with other teachers. Do, would you like to talk us more about it? Is is it something that is meant to make um, teaching fun and easy? Ooh. Fun, engaged, for sure. It's not necessarily the easiest way to do it. We mm-hmm. call it project-based learning. And what we do is we take the standards in the classroom, and then we connect it to industry, real-world problems in the world. So you have third graders, 10th graders, working in conjunction with community partners, with businesses or nonprofits, and they're solving problems together. So instead of just doing algebra or writing sentences, uh, they're out there um, in a park and they're studying the science and biology of things to say, hey, this invasive species shouldn't be here and it's hurting the ecosystem, let's go do something about it. And we see it move uh, our learners from apathetic and passive Mm. to purposeful and engaged. And again and again, teachers tell us, whether it's their second year or their 25th year, they say, this is why I got into the teaching. Mm. So what we, what we do is we help with workshops, with coaching, with my book, PBL Simplified. The idea is, is that we really want you to get you in your sweet spot. You got into education because you're passionate and you want to help the next generation see new opportunities. This is a way to make that happen. Wow. I read that you help people live their best lives with courage, confidence, and compassion. How do you do that? 
mm. in a lot of different avenues. Mm. But the 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 sequence of those words is important for me. So it starts with courage. Somewhere you need to take a step to do something new, something mm. you haven't done before. Yeah. If it's in the classroom, like you're going to teach a different way than you maybe you've never experienced it, and that takes courage. And once you've done that, then you gain confidence in that. Yeah. You have confidence because you've seen the results. You, know, you take that step forward to bring a new habit into your life. And once you see the success of that, there's confidence in that. Mm -hmm. And you move forward seeing those results. And then the compassion is you want to circle back and help someone else go through the same process. So you've seen success. You've taken courage. You've taken the next step. You have confidence. Now go help somebody else through that same process, mm -hmm. whether it's, again, in the classroom or it's on a podcast hmm. or you know it's a habit that you've created you want to share that with people that you love and so that's why it's confidence courage and compassion wow so what's the benefit of pbl to teachers and students alike so the benefits are the first one is engagement hmm. you know, we've got uh, you can't say the whole generation's apathetic but if you see a teacher and you say hey do you have any apathetic students that don't care about their education yeah, yeah, right. Every time they raise mm -hmm. their hand, mm -hmm. and they just don't see the purpose of it. You know, like a Carlos, when I had him, he did, education didn't change the lives of people in his family. In fact, mm -hmm. it was a negative experience. Mm -hmm. So why would he have a positive idea yeah. of it? So project-based learning brings the why to learning. It tells Carlos, like, this is why we're going to learn these things. Mm -hmm. And that starts to flip the script. Now he's paying attention. Now he wants to be taught because he sees the benefit for him yeah. right now. Yeah. He wants to help solve this problem. Yeah. And as we do that as teachers and students together, we're preparing kids for a whole new world. We're, one of the things that we do in project-based learning is we're preparing them with employability skills. Mm. How do you talk to people? How do you use teamwork? How do you problem solve? You know, How do you start a podcast? Because the, the opportunities with the podcast are are really significant yeah. but a lot of times our learners don't know how to speak to other people so those are the things we teach because if you're going to go talk to a community partner a business say the bank of a ceo at a bank you need to work on your handshake yeah. you know you need to work on you know, how you speak and give eye contact so those are some of the skills that go beyond the academic skills that really prepare our learners for you know a world of ai and financial uncertainty and all the things that we see you can't prepare that with a textbook necessarily, but we can use the textbook to jump off of it and solve some real world problems to give kids real experience. Mm. From everything you have said, what can we tell someone who thinks that you made a bold step transitioning from being an engineer to teaching, yet they also want to do something else because there are doctors who would, would have preferred to be musicians or artists and you mm. know that kind of thing, but they were never ever given the opportunity to pursue that. How, what can we say to encourage them to move on with that? Oh, I, listen to this podcast so you can continue to hear these positive stories mm -hmm. that when, when you follow your heart, you, you land, right? And you continue going and you find fulfillment and it's totally worth it. Yeah. Um, you know, I made a, a pretty bold move, but I would also say that you could probably make some smaller moves, right? In your example, if you're a doctor and you want to get into music, you could probably play a gig on the weekend. Right? Like you don't have to play every week, but start to move over there. Start to see what it looks like. Get a little closer. And then maybe the jump doesn't seem so big. But I, I will tell you, at least in my experience, it was totally worth it. And I would, I would never, I don't regret a minute of it. Great. If you had a mantra for our audience today, what would that be? I think the audience just needs to follow their heart and, and follow... You know, I like that sequence. Take the courage to take that first step. Once you take that first step, have see the confidence that, that comes. And maybe it doesn't. If it doesn't come, maybe it's the wrong step. Right? It is possible to take the wrong step. But take some courage to take some new steps. Yeah. When you find the right ones, you'll have confidence in it. And then as that grows, and it'll grow, you keep doing that step again and again. Find some new steps to build confidence. Don't forget to be grateful. Yeah. And come back with compassion and help somebody else come through it. That's where I think the true meaning comes from. It's one thing to find that it works for you. When you can take somebody else through and see that it works for someone else, that's when life gets really special. Wow, I like that. I like that. Is there anything you would have wished we talked about in today's episode that we haven't touched on yet? Hmm. Uh, 
the one thing that I would maybe bring up is the generational impact of what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. You know, my kids, I have five kids. Okay. And my five kids, they know my journey. Yeah. We talk about it often. So they know that I started in one place, my passion led me somewhere else. Yeah. And they see the results of that. Yeah. So now when they step into life, and as they're looking at the world, they're looking for their place in the world, not just a job. Yeah. They're looking for their passion. They're looking for their purpose, not just a paycheck. Yeah. And that impact continues. And we can all have that within our families, or our classrooms, or our podcast audience. But sometimes I think we forget about the ripple effect generationally of these decisions that we're making. Wow, I like that. I totally like that. Well, when I, I think I've said this too many times, but it's right to say it again here because of what we're talking about. But like I said, when I came out of uni, I had the mind of doing things on my own. Then it was so difficult because one, my parents wouldn't allow me. They felt that um, at least I should have taken the offer from the uni as a lecturer. And if I wasn't going to do that, then I have to go and work for somebody to pay me, especially in the bank. Because at that time, in Ghana, bankers were paid very well. And most of my mates had bought their first house, their first car. So you can you can just imagine they were totally established. And I remember they would come to my house with their... Anytime they buy a new car, they just come to my house and will be showing off. And my, my mom couldn't take it because I graduated top of my class, second top of my class. So the, she was thinking, you did better than all these people. And look at your life. You want to go the hard way. Why? You know, all of that. But I was still insisting that that was the way I wanted to go. And at a point, she was able to influence me. So I went looking for a job in the banks. Um, I, I did get a job at Barclays, but I didn't like the position they gave me. They gave me direct sales. And direct sales won't keep me in the office. It, I'll have to be going around... And Ghana is very hot, one of the hot countries in you, you can find around. So it's like you're under the scorching sun and that condition wasn't my thing. So I only did the job for, I think I lasted three days in that job. And I said I wasn't going to do it again. And I came out and still went on pursuing what I wanted to do, doing things on my own. And for some reason, I think that God just wanted me to be here. Because everything else that I did didn't actually work well but when i decided to empower women to be able to give them skills to start small businesses of their own give a bit of myself what i know impacting their lives has been brilliant and it's so easy for me and i think this is where i have to be so sometimes when you find it difficult doing other things because probably society friends family is pushing you in one direction and it's so you feel the pressure you feel you have to satisfy them if you feel the pressure and on the uneasiness it may not be for you stick to what you think is yours you know stick to it and keep going the fulfillment is for me is everything money is good yes you will have a little whatever you're doing you still have money to go by but you may not have it overflowing or whatever you, you think it is but the fulfillment in there the peace waking up and going to work but it feels like you are doing um something leisurely you know it doesn't feel like work that is the beautiful thing about it for me i don't feel i'm working i feel like i'm i'm having fun but i'm yet i'm working so that the pressure is very limited and all of that and and is is exactly what you've talked about here and i'm happy we are running off like this with my side of the story as well to emphasize that it's a good thing when you find yourself in this space yeah and sheila i would just affirm you that yeah. uh you're having a generational impact yeah as you're affirming yeah. women and they're doing businesses yeah. or whatever it is yeah. they're called to do yeah. their whole network sees that yeah. right so and then and then they're doing the same thing exactly. like they're having an impact so yeah. there's this generational exponential impact that comes out of you're just one person exactly. finding their fulfillment and then serving others. Wow, well, beautiful. What will your final fi- final message be as we wrap up? If you have any. Oh, it, I always do, Sheila, if you give me the opportunity. Because yeah. uh, this is just such a fun, passionate conversation. Yeah. It is to find that thing that you're called to do. Exactly. And it's, and, and you know, if, if you're not sure, reach out for help. Yeah. Find a coach, listen to this podcast. Because it's worth it. When you find the thing you're called to do, you'll know it. Momentum moves you forward. Like Sheila said, it's it's 
almost leisurely. Yeah. It's not work. Yeah. I, I've, I've put in a couple hours already this morning, but it wasn't work. It's, yeah. it's things that I love to do exactly. as I serve people. Exactly, exactly. We would like to say a massive thank you, Ryan, for coming on podcast with Sheila today. Thank you, Sheila. I appreciate it. Great. If you've been listening in, this is Season 2, Episode 82 of our podcast series, where we bring seasoned guests with inspiring real-life experiences and stories to share with us. Do not miss out on all these lovely experiences. Subscribe and be notified when a new episode is released. While at it, please drop us a rating. We have a video presentation of this episode on our YouTube channel. Just search for Podcast with Sheila on YouTube and you'll find us. Our prayer for you this week is that you become a positive influence in our world today. Until we meet again, have a brilliant week.